Hello everyone. So in this video, we will be starting with the fourth lecture of the Streamlit series. And first we will import some basic libraries. So I'm going to say Streamlit, Streamlit as ST. I'll also be needing pandas. So I'll say import pandas as PD. I also need NumPy. I will say and import NumPy as NP. And lastly, I need time. So import time. So as usual, we'll first go to the shell, the uh, CMD prompt, and then we will start the streamlet. So first we'll go to the folder. It is in datum, then streamlet. And after that, we can all, we have to go to video code. And here we have to say streamlet uh, uh, run, and then pass the name of the file, which is lecture four. So as you can see, the, uh, the browser has opened. So the first thing that I'll show you is the button. So for that, we have to say st.button and you have to pass what you need written on the button. So let's say time is, or you can also say click me, click me and what you want it to do. Well, the this function, whenever it is clicked, it will return. Uh, I'm just going to initialize the variable as PR and we are going to write st.write PR. Okay. So whenever you click the button, the PR becomes true, but whenever the button is not clicked, it will become, it will remain as false. Okay. So if you go to the, uh, this function, uh, this, uh, window, and then you try to rerun it, you will see a click me button has come, but there is false written over here, which, me which means that the button has not clicked. If I click the button, this will turn to true. See, but now if I click the button again, it will continue remaining true. Why? Because what has happened is whenever, so this is something that you need to understand. Whenever you do anything on the browser in Streamlit, that is whenever you click a button or you uh, fill our input text, whenever you do some input stuff, okay, this is very, very important. The entire program is run from top to bottom, which means if I'm going to write over here, let's say st dot time or st dot write and then I'm going to give time dot time. Okay. Let me rerun it and I'll show you what I mean. Okay. I'll rerun it. This is giving the time. Okay. And since I haven't clicked the button, it is giving us false, which means the entire program was run. First, the time was printed, then the button was uh, printed. And since I did not click the button, then PR is false. And that's why st.write PR is also false. As you can see over here, st.write PR is false. Now what, I, what, what will happen is if I click the button, what will happen is the entire program will run. However, the st.button after clicking the button, the PR value will become true, which means this line will also run. Okay. And that's why you can see over, I haven't clicked the button. You see 640.38, whatever, 640, 7640. If I hit click me now, this will change. See 689, which means the entire program was run. Okay. So this is one very important and this thing has turned true. So this is very important thing that you need to remember. Okay. If I again hit click me now, you will again see that this will change. Okay. So remember 689707. So it changed, which means that if you hit any click me or you do anything. Okay. You, uh, I'll show you other inpo, uh, input widgets. I have just shown you the button. I'll show you the other ones as well. Even if you do all of that, the entire program will run. So keep it in your mind. It's very, very important. That's why we use sometimes like caching. That's uh, we use caching in Streamlit in order to do certain things when we don't want certain parts of the code to be run all the time, all the time. Okay. So this is one way. Now I'm going to show you another thing that you can do over here. Instead of having this, what if? I am going to remove this right. Okay. Instead of doing this, what I do is PR equal to true, which means only when the button is clicked, what I want you to do or what I want the program to do. I want the program to print the time. Okay. So for example, if I go here and I rerun, you see, there is no time being shown. There is a button, but there is no time. Now what, what will happen if I click this button? Well, if you look at the program, it means that PR will turn to true, which means this uh, time should be printed. So if I go here and do click me, well, yes, the program has run and the time is being shown. What if I uh, hit click me one more time? 
again the time has changed okay so this is very important so the pr value basically tells that the button has been clicked or not clicked now i want to show you one more uh, thing over here there is also something called as on click same thing okay and you have to define a function so on click is basically a function so i'll have a function and then i'm just going to print over here uh, time dot time which basically means whenever this button will be clicked and i'm not going to use this anymore so when, whenever the bus button will be clicked the on click function will be in, invoked and it will see okay what function it is referring to it is referring to the fn function where is the definition here is the definition of the fn function so it will go into the function and whatever the line is over here or lines it will be executed so we'll go back we'll try to hit a rerun so the click me is there now what will happen is if i hit click me you see the time is being shown but this is shown on the top of the button okay so that's why whenever you want to have it on top of the button you keep it like this or mostly you want it at the bottom so that's why you use uh, pr and this thing and then you remove this and remove the on click as well so this is how this is the way you can use the pr button okay uh, or the button and uh, the output of the uh, button function now the second thing that we can do is download so let's say i have i make a uh, pandas data frame so i'm going to say pd uh, sorry df is equals to pd dot data frame and let's initialize some values okay so let me say i'm going to have np dot random dot random and i'm going to have 10 comma 2 okay and i'm also going to define the columns so i'm going to say call one and then call call two okay so if you just write it like this or just just print tf okay you go over here and then you rerun you see the data frame is shown over here now let me try to download this so for that what i'm going to say is i'm going to have a variable i'm going to say data is equals to df dot to csv which means this is a data frame this df is a data frame please convert the data frame to a csv file format and encode it using the utf8 utf-8 okay once you do that there is one last thing that you need to do so till here our data has been uh, the csv file has been created however we haven't named it as a csv file right now now in order to create a download button what you can do is st dot download button it's as simple now the first thing that you need to do here is you need to define something like the label okay so i'm gonna say label is the text that will be written over here download file okay now i have to produce the data i have to give the data so data is actually just this data okay so data is data um optionally you can also give file name i'm going to give the file name as i'm going to give the file name as uh new csv dot or new file new file dot csv okay and lastly you need to give the mime mime whatever and in this case we use text slash csv because this is a csv file now what I'll, i'm going to do is i'm going to go over here and rerun now there is an option download file if you click this option you will have a window where you can download the csv file and once you download the csv file you will see the file that had been shown earlier okay so earlier means whatever the df because this is a random function so it will be a new file every time but you get the deal right so new new file will be generated and it will be available for download so now what happens if we don't have a data frame but we have something like let's say a, a text so let's say txt is equals to um, this is a sample text okay now i want to download this so i'm going to say st dot download button now obviously this is a simple text you can have an entire text file you get the hang right so i also need the first thing i need is a label so label i am going to say download download the file okay and i need to give the data the data is txt that's it now i'm not going to give the file name because it's optional i'm not going to give the mime because again you know the default is text 
so I don't have to give it because it is the default option so I'm going to save it go over here rerun now when you click this button you will again be able to download the file okay now the last thing that is there is let's say you want to have an image let's say you want to open and well, let's say you want to download an image so first you'll have to have an image in the folder in wherever this uh, this uh, lecture 4 file or wherever your file is present so in my case we have a doggo.jpg uh, file as you can see on the screen and I can open it let's say file is equals to I'm going to open the file so I'm going to have doggo dot doggo dot jpeg jpg and I'm going to write rb okay so this is the file now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a button btn and I'm going to say st dot download button download button and again the same thing I need to give a label so I'm going to say download image download image okay now I have to give the data so for the data I need to give the file so I am going to give the file now after that what I need to do is I need to give the file name again this is optional so let's say doggo doggo image dot jpg and lastly I need to give the mime and in this case the mime will be image slash jpeg okay now if you go back after saving you go back and rerun you will see download image once you hit this uh, button you will have the download you can download the image and it will be saved in your default download folder okay so that is with the file for downloading the image now let's see another dialog or let's say another input widget which is the checkbox now what is a check checkbox you have you all have seen checkboxes okay so let's say ck is our op uh, is our uh, variable st dot checkbox okay now what you need to give is let's say we need to make a checkbox for uh, agreement so whenever you are going to let's say you are going to create a account on google so, okay so when you create a google account at last it says i agree to the terms and conditions right so i say i agree fine and the other thing that i need to give here is there is an optional variable called uh, okay i'll not just give it i'll not give it right now okay now if the button is checked or if the checkbox is checked that is if ck is equals to true um, I just want you to print the message that agreement done okay so I'll save it I'll go over here I'll rerun you see I agree and the checkbox is not uh, checked so once I check I expect the value of ck to turn to true and once it is true I expect agreement done to be written okay so I'll say I agree and you can see the agreement done has been written over here so this is how checkbox operates the other thing that you can do is uh, let's just say else st dot write uh, agreement not done okay and the value I'm going this is an optional parameter called value so ideally when you saw over here this was not checked okay this was not checked which means the message was not being printed okay so what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to say value is equals to true which means from the start the default position is that the box will be checked so if I rerun you see the box is checked in the if I convert it into false let's say over here I go here and I say false and if I rerun the check will be gone so whenever you are over here the default option in this case is whenever value equal to false the default option is not checked so you have to click and then it will say agreement done and if you unclick it then or uh, unclick it then agreement not done okay so this is the way you use the checkboxes now let me use something called as the radio buttons now radio buttons are also very very interesting because here you need to give certain options so I am going to say option is equals to st dot radio st dot radio okay now what I need to give here is first obviously the label so I am going to say label as saying order your food okay so we are in a restaurant and we will say order your food okay now I need to give the options so what are the options what's on the menu okay what's on the menu so you will say pizza you will say let's say we also have some burgers 
and we have some chips okay so these are the three things that are available in the restaurant so if the person or the one who, one who is the cuff uh, if the customer orders pizza pizza we are going to write we are going to write you you ordered pizza okay else or let's say let's have some other options okay so if option equal to what was the second option the second option was burger so if the option is burger i can go and copy over here and then just print you ordered burger else if or if you have the third option which is instead of burger now you're having chips so let's say you ordered chips so here i can go and say you ordered um chips okay now i'm going over here and i'm going to rerun so the default option is pizza i'll show you the index so it says you ordered pizza let's say you click on chips so you ordered chips let's say you click on burger so you ordered burger okay now obviously when you rerun the first uh, option was clicked okay already clicked what if you want the second or third option to be clicked so you say index is equals to one so the first option will be pre-selected so you see the first option burger was pre-selected if you go back and say two and go and save this and rerun you will see the third option chips is being pre-selected so this is how it operates the last thing that i want to show you is select box this is the last input widget, uh, widget for today in the next video we'll be doing five more so this is also pretty much the same but here what we are going to have is let's say select box select box st dot select box again you need the those same things you need the label and here i'm going to say where do you live so we are asking the person where do you live okay this is the question and also you need to give the options so the options that you're gonna give let's say the first option that you have is moscow the second option you have is new york and the third option you have is istanbul okay so these are the three places that is available and again the same thing if option equal to let's say if the person lives in moscow so just st dot write you live in moscow okay lf lf okay lf if the option is if the option is new york let's say if the option is new york then you write you live in new york and if the option is Istanbul okay Istan, Istanbul then you can finally write st dot write as you live Istanbul fine now you go over here and then you rerun so obviously the first one that is selected again with index 0 is Moscow you can go and choose Istanbul you can go and choose New York so you just click over here and choose different options so i hope you understood the video and if you really understood then please go ahead and like and subscribe the video and 